Hello and welcome to another edition of Nation Building. On this program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of the Bahamas. On our program today, we have a very special guest, but before we introduce him, we'll go to this break and come right back. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corn Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. A new day. This is our new day. And in the blue glow of the morning, there's still time to reach back into our dreams to become dreamers in the daylight and live our lives and hopes with open eyes. Yes. This is the day to do the things that will fill our lives with joy and with love. Dreamers in the daylight, anything is possible. This is our new day. We are alive. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Bartlett from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. You bring passion, and we bring world-class infrastructure and innovation that's designed to help your business grow. You have determination. We've got your back with a super-fast LTE network, giving you access to whatever you need, when you need it. You offer superior service, we put you in control. With a dedicated care team to look after your business 24-7. Together, we have the advantage. Alive. Let's do this. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. And on our program today, we're very pleased to have with us a newly elected member of parliament. I think you're the first newly elected member of parliament on our show. Welcome to our show, uh, Reverend Frederick McElpine. Thank you, Mr. Pinnock. From Grand Bahama. Nice to have you here, sir. It's a pleasure. You are just fresh off your election victory in 2017. Know it must be an exciting um, time for you and for your family. I know you have been at this for a while, seeking elected office, uh, trying to serve your community in Grand Bahama. And so I must say congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir, and it's a pleasure. And uh, with regards to your congrat congratulation remarks, I want to say thank God for the opportunity to be able to serve 
I am only here because of his grace and his presence. Wonderful. And so this is, after all, your first time appearing on our program. We, we tried to get you during the heat of the election campaign, but you were busy, like most of the other candidates, um, out doing your um, campaigning. And so wanted to share a little of your history, a little about you, and so wanted to go straight into that and to just find out from you um, um, where were you born? Where were you raised? Um, talk to us sure. a little about your background. I was, I was born in New Providence, November the 28th, 1965, 11.45 uh, p.m. at Princess Margaret Hospital. Uh, but I grew up in Grand Bahama. I am the first born to my parents, both deceased, Frederick Llewellyn and Cynthia Flora Bell Penn McElpine. Um, I'm also the grandson of the late Captain Simpson Penn, uh, better known as First Company Boys Begay. He played a major role in the lives of many men in this society today. And um, he's been one of the persons I always call my personal hero. Um, I attended school in Grand Bahama because I grew up in Grand Bahama. So basically, I was born in Nassau, but I grew up in Grand Bahama most of my life. I went to school at uh, the primary school, uh, Hawksville Primary. I also attended Florida Air Academy in um, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I also went to school in Jamaica for a period, the Carteret College in Mandeville, Manchester. And then I went to school at Freeport High, which is now known as the Bishop, Bishop Michael, Michael Eldon. Um, I had some personal problems at a very early age, family problems, which led to some things happening with me with school. Um, so in many cases, at the end of the day, I had to become self-taught and self-proficient uh, and efficient. Uh, but I was taught at a very early age, he who reads, leads. So I learned to read a lot and to uh, push myself, to further myself uh, in the direction in terms of being informed about what's going on in life. I had an early call also in ministry. I was converted at the age of 14, became the youngest ordained minister at the age of 17 in the year, uh, I think it was 1983. I was ordained by then Bishop Rupert Johnson at the Mission True Faith Church of God. Uh, after all, I became that minister because I had been traveling throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. My first mission experience was in Abaco. After experiencing some personal family problems, uh, I went to Abaco and started preaching, and I never stopped ever since. Uh, as a result, I have been preaching throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos and throughout the Caribbean and parts of the world. And that was the section of my life when I was basically called into evangelism. And uh, again, having had, in, having had a Methodist background, uh, I tend to wanted to, in my spiritual journey, be methodical and do things in a methodological way in terms of preaching the gospel and being sound. But I must confess, though, uh, Mr. Pinnock, in my early age, there were things that I thought at the age of 17 and 22 and 25 uh, that today I don't feel the same way about, whether it's doctrinally or, or just by way of maturing. I think Paul said it, when I was a child, I speak as a child and I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And so with time comes growth, and with growth comes maturity, and with maturity comes understanding. And so I spend a lot of time on the field preaching and carrying the gospel, and many doors were open for me and I was nationally known and internationally known. And then of course, in the year 1997, I took a different leap. Uh, right in smack in the middle of my, what one would call successful ministry, I decided that I had a call to enter politics because I felt for a very long time that the church was proliferating a lie back then. And that lie was with the head and not the tail. And I challenged the head of what? After, of course, during the time, one of my comrades, the late 
Dr. Miles Monroe, who talked a lot about kingdom and, and advancements of believers in the body of Christ. But I was prepared to do a little more than just talk it. I wanted to step out of the boat. And the only mistake I made in 1997 when I entered frontline politics was a lot of my colleagues were in the boat. But I did the Peter thing. I decided I wanted to walk on water. Mind you, like Peter, perhaps I sank a little bit, but I had enough sense to say, save me, Lord. <laughs> and, uh, and ever since, he's been carrying me uh, to and fro. And so I've had this boldness, and, and I, I do have a gift. I like to call it a third eye. And so sometimes I see up the road and around the corner what people don't see. And that was 1997 when I did that. Took a lot of beating for that. Very unpopular decision, if Very, I might add. Yes. At, the, at the time, the progressive liberal party was at its worst ebb. Um, it had lost the general elections of 1992. The then Prime Minister Hubert Ingram that won uh, had done significant work that even those in the PLP had to admit was transformative for the country. And so um, not many people believed that the PLP had a chance of winning in 97. So I think it was an interesting was an decision. Right, but it was a decision based on conviction. It was a decision that got me in the door politically. It is a decision that got me where I am today. It is also a decision. How so? It is also a decision. Well, let's take a look at it. After 97, when I ran, folks said, oh, he missed God. He's, he's out of order. He, 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 he missed it. No, it was preparation. Because today I am where I am today because of that decision. Not only am I am where I am today, but many preachers today, some of whom would tell you 20 years ago, they too would have said, mark you off. But today you look off in the, in the house. sense that you politics and preaching yes, don't, don't mix. mix. Right. Mm -hmm. But then when you look back today, you have a number of preachers. So you were, you, were, you were a trailblazer, I guess. I, I guess it's fair to say so. A, a very interesting is history. Let, let me ask you, um, you mentioned your father, Mr. Penn, correct? Grandfather. Grandfather, Mr. Penn. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you have, do you have any um, close? Um, relative parents or grandparents or anyone that's uh, from out of the country? Yes, my father. My father was a, a Jamaican by birth, mm. uh, but he obtained citizenship here in the Bahamas. He's lived in the Bahamas for a number of years. But He's Mr. Penn was Bahamian, isn't but no, Mr. That's Penn your maternal... Was also, no, Mr. Penn was also from the Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. He's a Turks Islander descent. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is fair to say that I have the blood of, of West Indian in me, uh, fully loaded with the Turks Island blood, the Jamaican blood, the Bahamian blood. My, my grandmother was from Cat Island. And so it's quite interesting. OK, so your, your maternal history uh, from your parents, your, your maternal side is, is, is full-blooded Bahamian, full if you will. Bahamian. And then from your dad, your dad is Jamaican, and of course, your grandfather from Turks Island. Turks Turks Very history, right. um, interesting. The, the reality I always um, joke around with my friends is that um, myself being of, of well, full-blooded, both parents are Jamaicans, and so I'm a first-generation Bahamian, but I always joke around that the, the country is significantly impacted. Uh, we're a mix of culture, really. Um, so many, um, m mostly Haitian descendants, of course, but so many others from the Caribbean and, and, and North America as well, and, 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 and Europe. So it's, it's a melting pot. It, it really is. And a lot of our, whether we want to accept it or not, a lot of our members of parliament who have served in the past and now are descendant from West Indian uh, perspective. So, I mean, the last names are not necessarily Bahamians. Okay. In a traditional so, sense, yes. yes. In, a traditional in, sense. in fact, Sir Lyndon Pinland, was exactly <laughs> his yeah, father, the, the Maynards, migrated the here folks, uh, from, it, from it, Jamaica, the Maynards, from yeah, other yes. Caribbean islands. So, but uh, for a minute, it's, it's an interesting, don't want to dwell on this point, but it, it's an interesting, it's a part of the country's history. It's so why is it? How do you explain the, if you will, a phobia of, of Caribbean foreign people when there is so much as you highlighted in leadership as well in the, in the country what I don't know from if whence it's, a, that it's a phobia I, I don't think it's a phobia as much more, or, more so of the older we, generation uh, yeah and, and people that say we, we suffer from xenophobia but I, I'm not sure I think uh, there's more of a fear 
fair. A fair. And I don't know if it's a fair, I, I, and I must be honest, I don't think it's a fair uh, that is across the board for all of those from the Caribbean descent. I think particularly of one particular race. And that okay. fair is that we don't want to be outnumbered. Numbered. And, reasonable. And, and that's a reasonable That's reasonable. Fair. That's, that's a reasonable, reasonable fair. Because at the end of the day, you want to know that uh, the Bahamas is for Bahamians and that Bahamians have ownership in their country. Is, is, is a lot of that rhetoric uh, has historically come out of the Progressive Liberal Party. Is that a part of what attracted you to it or not really in the initial no, stages? No, not really. I think, to be honest with you, the Progressive Liberal Party history, and, and, and people need to understand this, most of us in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, including the political operatives today, their parents or grandparents came out of the Progressive Liberal Party. Mm -hmm. There was a time, notwithstanding what we think today, there was a time that the Progressive Liberal Party stood for something that most people of color could identify with. However, uh, for most people of our generation past, up to us, I think we were the limit. Uh, my son, your son, your grandchildren, they're not going to understand uh, the struggle of the 60s. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just basically us who were born in the 60s can slightly appreciate Jeez. and hardly. Hardly. All right? I, I, you're right. And I, in fact, um, I, I dare to say my mother, who, who, who is still alive, is um, though she migrated here back in the early 60s, um, she was a staunchly a, a supporter, very much in love with Selinden Pinlin. And um, so the, the, it, 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 only, it, it didn't only impact um, Bahamians who, who um, had a history of, of the struggles here, but also Caribbean nationals who came into the Bahamas and, as well. And it was, a, it was a different time. It was a time of, of, of racial tension, and, and it was a time of the Martin Luther King. Yes, not the only in the Bahamas, Mantai, but in, in the United yeah, the States Michael as well. Manning. Yeah, throughout, right. even throughout the Caribbean. Interesting. You know, so, uh, yeah. let, let, let's get down, um, Reverend Michael Point, into um, the pol your political life. Let's talk about the lead up to the 2017 general election campaign. And I, let me preface that by saying I'm aware of the fact that uh, after your initial dive into politics, as you put it, to break the mold, if I can rephrase your uh, coin a phrase for you, um, you went into the Progressive Liberal Party, became a candidate in 97. Uh, to, 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 I guess, prove you said that church, uh, there is value to church leaders or church being in, involved in the political life of our country. Um, tell us quickly, in 30 seconds, what happened as far as politics bef up to before the last, this last election? What did you do? What was your prior involvement? To that, yeah, prior quickly. to that, what I did was, well... No, no, sorry, not prior to it. After the 97, what was your political involvement quickly uh, before the that, break? Yeah. yeah, well, after that, I, I was... I was elected vice chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, mm -hmm. and I continued to work with the party uh, at the time. And then what made you leave? Uh, I left in 1999 or 2000, thereabout, and it was the leadership at the time. Okay. And of course, today that leadership has been basically... Okay. Anything specific uh, about the leadership that made you leave? I. I'm a fair person, I'm a straightforward person, and I think at the time I saw perhaps down the road that the leadership uh, at that time of that particular uh, leader was not to my liking. I did not see progress. Was it personal or is just having no, to do with I just, I just thought personally that I did not see the ability of You that. lack confidence. Yeah. And, yeah. And, I, so, I, there was and, and so that confidence. was the leadership of Perry Christie, to yes, be sure. Yes. And, and, then, and, and coming from a Sir Lyndon Pinlin, to a Perry Christie, I, 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 okay, I, I okay. saw the difference. I, I hear Big you. Big difference. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we'll be right back after these messages. It's a new day. This is our new day. And in the blue glow of the morning, there's still time to reach back into our dreams. To become dreamers in the daylight. A 
and live our lives and hopes with open eyes. Yes, this is the day to do the things that will fill our lives with joy and with love. Dreamers in the daylight, anything is possible. This is our new day. We are alive. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. You bring passion, and we bring world-class infrastructure and innovation that's designed to help your business grow. You have determination. We've got your back with a super-fast LTE network, giving you access to whatever you need, when you need it. You offer superior service, we put you in control. With a dedicated care team to look after your business 24-7. Together, we have the advantage. Alive. Let's do this. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Bartlett from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. Alive knows what you do today will determine the success of your tomorrow. So we've invested in world-class infrastructure and innovation so every business in the Bahamas can grow. Like our online business account that lets you manage all your business mobiles simply and efficiently through one portal. From adding users and numbers to drilling down where you can view details of individual data, calls, and texts to providing an immediate overview of usage month on month, we put you in control. Our people are here to help your business grow. Our relationship managers take the time to understand your business. And with our care team and our Alive stores, we are there to support your business needs. So let's work together, Bahamas. Let's grow together. Let us be part of your team. Let's do this. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. Don't come home without it. These arms of mine, they are yearning, yearning for wanting you. Where is it? Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport.
Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and I'm here today with newly minted member of parliament, if I can say so, uh, Reverend Frederick McElpine. And he is one of the many preachers elected to our parliament this time around. Uh, we might be seeing a transformation, uh, Reverend McElpine, of uh, preachers taking over the house. <laughs> I think that that's a fair. <laughs> That's a fair, and rightfully so, because as you mentioned that, uh, let me just throw this in here. Nobody wants a religious fanatic leading their country. At least I certainly can speak for myself. And so, uh, but yet at the same time, there's nothing wrong with having persons of spiritual and moral values okay. representing the people of the Bahamas. For, for a long time in our country, the sentiment was you and not only in the country but i think in the region for sure the sentiment was you don't mix politics and religion and i have lived through this transformation um, to see people of faith uh, elevated in in politics of course the americans to our north um, still have this in fact it's become law this legal this great divide that uh, it's kind of interesting because the separation of church and state provides for the accommodation, if you will, of all sectors and all groupings, which it should, um, but specifically seeks to um, isolate Christendom, Christianity, and Christian values from taking too much of a front seat. Which, which many people, I think, rightly see as hypocrisy and ridiculous, because if you're going to allow a, a homosexual movement or if you're going to allow any groupings, anything, a Muslim movement, any grouping that conflicts with, with religion or with church, if you're going to allow laws to be made to provide for those groupings, you basically should, in fairness, provide, allow for there to be to, for that same allowance for all, all groupings, religious mm -hmm. groupings and, and other interest groups of, of sorts. So they are having and continue to have an interesting dilemma where that is concerned, even to the point of the Supreme Court judges who get appointed and, and so on. So it's, it's interesting that we are at this place. And for people of faith, um, there is no question that uh, there is much rejoicing, notwithstanding what political party one may affiliate with. Uh, and we had, for, for sure, uh, the last term under the Progressive Liberal Party, the Speaker of the House of Assembly, um, not only was a professing Christian, but one who was a charismatic Christian, and um, many, many others in the Progressive Liberal Party, as well as the Free National Movement, are uh, believers. But again, as far as uh, pastors, and I know, um, I think, Lindy Russell from Grand Bahama, uh, back in 97, I think, got elected. Mm -hmm. He was a pastor as well, but there's certainly more now. So people of faith have much to share about in that regard. But what about those who say, look, um, they do not subscribe to faith, uh, they do not subscribe to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and the practice of your Christian church, um, and don't, and worry that um, people like yourselves will seek to legislate morality or values. What do you say to them? We don't seek to legislate morality, but it's always right to do the right thing. And you cannot legislate morality. But we must get to the point where we recognize that we need people of faith and morals to guide our community and country back to the place where it used to be. I used to, I often ask myself the question, Mr. Penner, how is it that our forefathers and mothers had less but did more? We have more and can't do as much. And so again, morally, we have to be the, 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 the conscience, and that's what Parliament is there for as a preacher, for me to be the conscience and to be conscientious Mm -hmm. about the views that I espouse. But let me also hasten to say, being a preacher, when we talk about separation of church and state, I thought the intent there was to make sure that the church does not espouse or impose its view on the state, and neither does the state impose its views on the church. Because I think we are missing 
the major reality. Who's in charge of the church? God. Who is the creator and in charge of the country? God. How can you separate it when they're both owned by the same being? God owns the country, created the country. He's the, he owns the church. And for those who do not believe in God, the creator? Well, as you for say? those who don't believe in God, I can simply say, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I cannot see air, but I'm not going to stop breathing. What do you do for those people who are not people of faith, don't share your belief? How do they take comfort in the fact that you wouldn't uh, pass laws that will put them at a disadvantage? Would be balance. Balance. Everything needs balance. The church needs balance. The government needs balance. Even in your personal home life, you need balance. Even with you, you got to balance, prioritize. You got to, to be able to, to balance the scale in being fair. Uh, let, me, let me give you an example. Every time there was a, a boat coming in that they would say with homosexuals, the church would often get out and decide that they are going to, to protest. protest. I never joined in. I never agreed. Because then I would ask the question, are we going to protest the boats because we know the boat have people of alternative lifestyle? Are you prepared preachers and Christians to protest the boat that's coming behind the boat with alternative lifestyle that have fornicators and liars and adulterers and backbiters? Are you going to also protest them? That's what I'm talking about when I talk about balance. I don't have to like what you do, but I, ha I should have enough grace in me to recognize that you have the freedom to do what you do, even though I may not agree with what you do. That's where balance comes. Are you prepared to go as far as to allow um, laws to be passed to accommodate gay marriage in the Bahamas? Absolutely not. Isn't that balance? Uh, no, no. I'm going, to, I'm going to answer your question this way. If my government or any government wanted to seek to pass legislation to entertain or to acquiesce to same-sex marriage, a person like Frederick McAlpine will not be a part of that vote. And during the debate, I will make my queries known as to why I don't support that. Now, I don't believe in, in same-sex marriage. But I'm also aware that there are people let me give you an example. Here's what I got to think about. A family did not speak to a young man because he's a homosexual. He dies. He has a friend. The family did not speak to this young man because he's a homosexual. But the family now wants to come to the friend of this homosexual, demanding the land, demanding the car, demanding the money, the bank book. So, we need to also take a look at that and say, where are their rights? But aren't you going down a slippery slope then when you provide accommodation for uh, people, homosexual people who want rights? It started out in the U.S. just wanting rights to provide for spouses and all the rest and of it. For civil it ended, union? It ended up for civil, it ended up for civil, civil union, union and then eventually to gay marriage. No, we, I do not. Marriage is... How do you, how do you Let me stop? say this, marriage mm -hmm. is designed for a man and a woman. Homosexuals, lesbians, alternative lifestyle, whatever you choose to call it, exists. And the reality is... And it's not new. It's nothing new. It was so why is the, the church, the Bible. Why is the church not all only excited? Is it not, not, not only is it not new, I'm going to go a little further on a limb and say practically every one of us watching me by television know somebody in our family, I'm not going outside, in our family that is perhaps of that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it right. I ask myself the question even in the church. If a person is a known homosexual in the church, what am I supposed to do as a preacher? Run him? No, I don't like what you do. But the place for you to learn and to be transformed and converted is in the church. And so we have to love these persons, but not love what they do. Okay, so you're on record uh, clearly saying that you are balanced uh, when it comes to these issues of faith and values issues. Um, you, you said you, are, you will stand with the, with the 
I guess with the church or with the uh, church's belief on coming down on all major values issues, but you're not prepared to go to extreme to isolate or yeah. deny rights. Don't want to deny rights, don't do, want do, to go do, to extreme. Do, do you have a problem with, an, with a homosexual person being elected to our parliament? No. You don't have a problem with I that. don't have a problem because if I'm going to be honest with that question, the truth is I personally think we've had bisexuals and homosexuals already elected to parliament. Okay, none, none that has been declared. None that has been declared, and so, and so but there, again, we can't, I, that, I don't know if okay. that's a fair okay. assumption. Okay, but, but let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is a belief mm -hmm. that there have been persons of alternative lifestyle on both political divides. Let, let, let's, let, let's be clear. The principle is, is not to attack anyone who is of that view. The principle is to bring in the open a discussion of what the role of the church and its leaders and people like you who now have the legislative powers right. ought to do. And so, the, the, so that we can move on, what? I just want to make it clear. What I'm seeking here, sir, on behalf of our viewers, is to understand as one of the church's leader and now one of our country's leader, um, what to what, how far do we go? And when I ask the question about are you prepared to allow someone, are you comfortable with someone who's of an alternative lifestyle to be elected? And the question fundamentally then is, having said that you have no problem with that, why wouldn't you? But I do have a problem with the practice or the behavior or I, the lifestyle. I, I understand you disagree okay. with it. Why right. would you not have a problem with someone of that uh, um, belief or practice getting elected? Wouldn't you then? Shouldn't you then expect I, I, that? Shouldn't you then expect that uh, someone of that um, belief and value would seek to promote, I was just about seek to, say, to legislate I'm on just behalf about to say, of the community? Let, let me say this. I expect that individual as long as they're not seeking to espouse their views or force their views on the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, he or she has every right to be elected to the parliament. And let me say why. Mm -hmm. Are there homosexuals? I'm going to throw it back on you. Are there homosexuals or people of alternative lifestyle in the Bahamas? Yes, they are. OK. Uh, if they exist, the Bahamas, don't you think that the parliament of the Bahamas should resemble the Commonwealth of the Bahamas? And then shouldn't you not agree that they should push their agenda? They have every right to push their agenda, but again, that lies on the purview of the government of the day and the leadership of the day based on our type of governance. Accepted. You spent some time in the Senate of the Bahamas. This is not your first time being a legislator. Tell us a little about that before we get into some more current issues. I enjoyed being in the Senate. I spent five years in the Senate. What year? Uh, that was 2007 to 2012, five full years in the Senate. And it was quite interesting. It taught me a lot. Um, Greatest lesson? That all that glitters is not gold. Every smile ain't happy and every shot I ain't sleep. <laughs> in other words, what I'm saying to those watching by television is that uh, what you always see it's not exactly what it, it might be. I don't know if our viewers uh, is, is gaining from that statement. You might want to provide a let little me, clarity. Me, yeah. You think when you get into politics, uh, you, you come in with this mind, and I guess everybody has said this, that you're going to change the world. You're going to make things. You're going to turn this thing upside down until you get the right side up. But a lot of times, what, you've, what your views are are not necessarily the views and the agenda of your counterparts and also And especially your, your those partner. in leadership. Yes, yes. So you, well, you, let, let us segue then, while you raise that, let's segue into uh, our current um, situation. And we're going to dive into that in our final segment, but I just want to put this out there. You are now elected to parliament. Um, it's a different place, even though the Senate is the upper house and it's supposed to be where um, elder statesmen or yes. people of, of, of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge go. It, it is, we know that it's not being used in that fashion in our country in quite a while. It's, it's really a place where people go uh, almost as a training ground or people you couldn't get in t a seat, you know, you give them an opportunity to serve in that. So what we want to do when we go into our next segment is to talk specifically about what your plan, seeing that you did have an exposure, some exposure in the Senate and realize that all that glitters isn't gold, 
We want to find out exactly what's going to glitter uh, for you now that you have some more power to legislate on behalf of our people. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. We'll be right back after these messages. That you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corn Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. A new day. This is our new day. And in the blue glow of the morning, there's still time to reach back into our dreams to become dreamers in the daylight and live our lives and hopes with open eyes. Yes. This is the day to do the things that will fill our lives with joy and with love. Dreamers in the daylight, anything is possible. This is our new day. We are alive. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Bartlett from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. You bring passion, and we bring world-class infrastructure and innovation that's designed to help your business grow. You have determination. We've got your back with a super-fast LTE network, giving you access to whatever you need, when you need it. You offer superior service, we put you in control. With a dedicated care team to look after your business 24-7. Together, we have the advantage. Alive. Let's do this. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we're here today, uh, fresh after the general elections of 2017, with one of its uh, victors, uh, the newest uh, member of parliament for the Pine Ridge constituency in Grand Bahama, who's also a reverend. And as I said before, lots of pastors in leadership in our and political leadership in our country uh, and a first for the, the number the amount of, of, of pastors now politicians Reverend Michael Pine fresh off your election win in 2017 and the numbers say that in Pine Ridge you got 2496 votes 53 percent of the votes compared to Dr. Michaels Darville, 2025, a victory of over 400 votes. He got 43%. A comfortable margin. 
not a landslide, but a comfortable margin. Quickly, tell us a little about your run up to this, uh, to the election of 2016, of 2017. When did you become a candidate and what was the journey like? First of all, let me take this opportunity once again publicly to thank my leader, the Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, for allowing me the opportunity to be a nominee along with the party officers of the Free National Movement. Uh, I was elected or really nominated back in 2016. I had to hit the ground running because, you know, Mr. Pinnock, uh, the record would reflect that my opponent in 2012 won by some 800 votes. So I had a task. I had to eat up his 827 votes, mm -hmm. plus make up the 471 votes, almost 500. So there was a swing difference there in reality of about 1,300. Mm -hmm. So as you say, not, not a great margin, but comfortable to the fact that I had to make up 827 votes. And so I've been knocking on doors. I've been meeting people. I've had to build up a database. And um, I just kept working. There were a few people who believe I could beat the doctor because he was the doctor. He was the minister for Grand Bahama. But in my heart of heart, I always knew from day one that I was going to be Dr. Michael Davel, the progressive Liberal Party candidate. And let me pause here to say, uh, again, I want to uh, commend Dr. Michael Davel. He was a worthy opponent. And he was an opponent that made me work very hard to attain the victory that I obtained. And if it wasn't, if he was not such a worthy opponent, perhaps I would have been lackadaisical. But he made me work. Mm -hmm. And for that, I'm grateful. And I also want to commend him for the work and the job he did as Minister for Grand Bahama as well. You, you, um, you are commend commending the good doctor now that you have been the victor, and that's an honorable thing to do. But uh, not, not so while you were campaigning. You, you were clear to point out all of the deficiencies. We don't have time to get, get into them now, but I guess that's your job. But um, when the chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party sat in your seat a few weeks ago now, leading up to the general elections of, of 2017, the one seat that he felt comfortable about in Grand Bahama was Pine Ridge. Yes. I and it seemed as if the Progressive Liberal Party really had significant stock in that seat. Well, let me put it this way. I knew when the, when the chairman was, and as a matter of fact, I watched that program. I knew for some time what they didn't know. I know that many of their supporters had recognized and was willing to support me, and had indicated that they would have supported me. What, I know you said you ran an effective campaign, obviously it's pro your victory proves that, but what ultimately, outside of your effort, what was the undoing of the Progressive Liberal Party and your opponent? I think people voted more so against their policies, their arrogance, their nepotism, all that led to the demise of the Progressive Liberal Party. As a result, it elevated the free national movement. And so in part, you are a benefactor of the people's discomfort, disagreement, issues with the Progressive Liberal Party yes. as a whole. Let's talk about Pine Ridge in our final segment. What plans uh, do you have? What are the major plans do you have for your constituency? First of all, to be a voice. Grand Bahama has been lacking a voice for a very long time. And so Grand Bahama has lost its oomph. It's get up and go. Grand Bahama has, has lost its ability to shine as it once used to. And so Grand Bahama now needs persons who are bold, bodacious, and tenacious enough to go and fight for the people. And so I want to be a voice. Secondly, I want to educate our people. There are some good people in Pine Ridge, 
people who are able to speak to issues and to articulate. And so I want to help with the education. I want to make sure that our young people are being brought up in a way whereby those who can further their studies after school programs, particularly helping those to achieve their BJCSEs and their BJCs. I also want to see assist in the disciplinary of our youths in that area. And I think we need to have a resurgence or a rebirth of the Boys Brigade, the Girls Brigade, the Pathfinders, get our young people involved with those types of organizations. I like to see Pine Ridge's dual. We have a residential area, but a part of Pine Ridge is also business community oriented. I like to develop a relationship uh, with the business community, particularly small business and see how we can build a relationship. And then I want to know who's Relationship, sorry, relationship to what end? Uh, relationship to the end that perhaps the employment of our people in Pine Ridge, that we actually live and work and play in Pine Ridge. And so uh, also to see that they perhaps have a voice, because sometimes small business owners feel like they're swallowed up by big bureaucracy. And so again, I think I can speak to those things and try to assist or guide them in the right direction direction. And I want to see that Pine Ridge get a fair shot. If there's 50 scholarships and there are five constituencies, I want to make sure that 10 comes to Pine Ridge. Now, Reverend Marker Pine, you and I know very well the politics of the Bahamas sufficiently to know that many of, while some of what you articulate is certainly achievable, and I guess you would say much is achievable with your skills, but you and I know resources is critical for any member of parliament, having, especially having a constituency that you, the makeup of what you have, um, not, not an upper class community, not an upper middle class community, not a wealthy um, community. And so you have some middle class, but you have the poor, you have a lot of struggling people. Grand Bahama, on the whole, as you previously said, is going through its worst ebb. How, sir, without a, you fail to make the cut as a minister of the government, and I know you don't choose yourself, but mm -hmm. um, you fail to make the cut as a minister, how do you plan to generate the kind of influence that is just as good as money in your government to be able to bring about much that needs to happen there? Speaking for the people and sticking with the people. But you need My resources. Resources will come. They will come. Because where there's vision, there's often provision. If you begin to take an initiative, there are persons in the community who's willing to help and assist. They said I had no resources for the campaign. Did you watch? my campaign from social media to national television. Yeah, but this is certainly different, um, Reverend no, Markle. I think there are people. You, you, you have now a situation where while your campaign would, would, would naturally raise funding from people who know you and, me and want to see you do well and so forth, you have a situation now where you're facing five long years in a very in a very starved, if I can say, community, economically starved. And people are looking to you. They just voted for you to be their voice and be their representation. But they're looking to you to provide jobs and opportunities and create but, much but all, of which and resolve a lot yes, of their issues, community but issues. All of that is also, Mr. Pennock, an extension of the government of the Bahamas. I am an effing member of parliament. But you are and not a cabinet minister no, and don't have the matter. influence. If, no, I would have the influence because I speak to the people. Now, if I ask a minister to do something, I represent the people. If I ask the minister to do something and the minister doesn't do it, I'm prepared to go right back in the house and say, I asked the minister and the minister and, didn't do and it. And you, sir, are setting up yourself to get in trouble with no, your, and no, with those because on your side. No, we have, no, but I might get in trouble with those on my side, but I won't get in trouble with the people of Pine Ridge. The people of Pine Ridge elected me, it, and I it, have a responsibility is, is, is that to a, the people of it, Pine Ridge. Is that a subtle message to, to, no, to, that to, should be to, the, to, to the ministers, uh, Minister of Grand Bahama or anyone there that no, look, no, look that, we, that's we need to a provide. message to the government of the Bahamas. Help your people 
to advance and to help their people or we will be out in the next five years. And We're in this together. And you are prepared to buck your party's leadership if you have to. For the people, I respect leadership. But I don't see me bucking the party because if my people are suffering and I'm asking you to put a speed bump where it needs to go or to assist me financially because I want to advance education, I don't see that as bucking. I see that as a man fighting for the people who elected him. But the, le the him. leaders in, in both major parties uh, traditionally they don't see it that way. You don't fall in line, you get cut next time, and there, you know, there are consequences. I think at the end of the day, I, I live like this. My life is in the hands of God. But if I could help somebody while I'm here, then I know at the end of the day my conscience is clear and I would have done what I should have done. When you do right by the people, the people often do right by you. So to make it clear, the people of Pine Ridge watching you today can count on you, if necessary, to buck your party's leadership in order to get results for them. I, I don't say buck my party. I will adhere, adhere to the wishes of the people of Pine Ridge. Even, and it, it, even if, if Pine Ridge says, for instance, let me give you an example. If Pine Ridge says vote no, and I vote yes, then I must be prepared to suffer the consequence so of the, the people of Pine so, Ridge. So the question is when inevitably you are faced with those kinds of decisions and you will the people come first you will be voting the people come with first the I've, sentiments of, of your the people. people yes and you're prepared for the consequences I'm so. prepared for the consequences you, can, you see that is the problem that we've had in politics for the last 15 years somehow in our minds and in our heads we believe that we're bigger than the people who have elected us I, I think, in fairness to many uh, representatives, um, Reverend Michael Pine, lead, uh, prospective leaders and those who have the privilege to sit where you now sit today, and it is a privilege to, to yes. serve the people of your community, want to also hold on to their seat and, want, and, and recognize that as an independent, as this election proves, you really can't get elected. Uh, generally speaking, unless you uh, have the party support. And so that's the conflict. So here's, here's where I'm at. I'm going to trust God, trust God that he will deal with the people of Pine Ridge to believe in me, to be upfront, straightforward with them, and God will take care of Two rest. quick questions before we go. W w are you a reformer, sir? Are you one of those members of parliament who believe that tremendous and significant reform needs to take place and the Prime Minister's powers are too broad. Yeah, and, and I'm not referring to your no, party's No, 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 I understand that. There, there are those who espouse to that view, I think. Um, but I'm comfortable with it as it is. I'd like to see some things that we, in increments, to be honest with you, the country feel that the whole system needs to change. And I'm asking you, yes, are you, are think, you in support that, of... Yes, I support that we need to be moving in a direction that is more inclusive. And you prepared to push issues such as fixed election date? Um, I believe in that. Um, um, Time limits for, pri for prime ministers, yes. And, and, I believe and that we should have a fixed election date. I believe we should have an independent boundary commission. And should the people of Pine Ridge uh, listen out for you bringing these issues to the fore should your party push it to the back burner and but it, my party on. shouldn't because it's the but platform. if it does no, but it's the platform now i know we, sometimes we, know we have ad, 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 amnesia but if they just happen to have amnesia then there are those of us who need to remind them that we spoke i mean this is the second time around we heard this you know we heard this about limits on prime ministership uh um, 10 years ago back in 92 97. Okay. It's now 2017, and we're still just talking about it. We, we, we need another hour to sit down Most and to talk certainly. about issues, but I will allow you to come back. You've been an interesting guest. I want to thank you for coming and thank sharing you so with much our viewers. Thank you so much for inviting me. Wonderful. Before we close this program today, um, I want to just take a moment out to uh, just very recently, I uh, lost my dad, and I want to just, um, if I've seen that I have the opportunity to do so, to just say, how grateful I am to Almighty God for having blessed me with a father. And he was imperfect, but um, he migrated to the Bahamas, my both parents, and got, got married here in, in, in the 1960s. And 
um, lived and worked here for quite a number of years. And I am eternally grateful to the Lord for his impact in my life. And I just wanted to, on this occasion, it is my first time since his passing, to just say how grateful I am for his contribution. On behalf of all of us here at Nation Building, I want to thank you for tuning in this week and watching our program. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you educational and informative programs.